G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a 38 machine pistol. Now, this is based off a real-life Mac 11, which is kind of like a baby Uzi, but it's not an Israeli weapon, it's an American-made weapon that was originally developed around the 1970s. It had a high rate of fire of around 1,200 rounds per minute, so that's kind of reflected in this thing's rate of fire there, so that should be good for getting out bullets as fast as possible. So potentially, despite having a low caliber, we might be finding this thing to have a little bit of DPS, but that's going to come at the cost of controllability because, well, there's not a lot of things to control the recoil here. We can fold that stock out, maybe put a fixed stock in place, but when we get this thing chambered up into 45s, I think it might be a little bit uh, on the uncontrollable side. They used to call this thing the uh, phone booth gun because its effective range was from one end to the phone booth to the other. So that's kind of interesting. But let's get into the attachments. First of all, we've got the receivers, and this thing is only able to be used in automatic form. And if you throw on a 45 receiver there for the uh, extra the round conversion, that's basically the advanced receiver getting 72 damage, and that will increase the range because the projectiles, yeah, 45 bullets are a little bit heavier, so they hold their energy over a longer flight. Now, you can throw on some barrels here, including a long barrel, a long light barrel, and there's also integral suppressed barrels, which don't actually decrease your range at all, which is nice. We'll throw on a long light barrel for now, and we can still use a suppressor if we want to on the end of a barrel like that. So we'll throw that one on. We'll have a very long barrel front heavy Mac 11. I mean, that'll probably help us control the recoil since we're firing 45s out of this thing if it's a little bit front heavy. Next up, we've got the grips. The plastic grip will result in less AP cost per shot, potentially useful for VATS and or VAFs. That's the bullet time slow motion VATS mod that I use. This one gives you an improved crit bonus, which is cool. This one gives you a bash damage bonus, which, you know, that's kind of cool. There's also taped versions of these ones, which will help your recoil control a little bit. Let's go with the uh, wood one here. We'll go for maximum crit damage on this thing. We'll make one that is going to be more um, aligned to constant VATS usage, but this one will go for straight up damage. Now for the magazines, there's options for quick eject mag for standard, medium, and also large. So that ammo capacity will go right up. I believe the maximum ammo capacity you find on these things in real life is 32, so we'll see if that one follows suit. There's no drum options, which would have been a cool addition, to be honest, because, you know, give it a Fallout Wasteland, a vibe-looking, like a makeshift drum, that'd be cool. Anyways, you can use the sights, you can glow sights, laser sight, if you don't want to use the sights at all. Red dot, holographic, and reflex. Take your pick. We'll go for a reflex sight. These ones look kind of cool. And we've also got the, uh, obviously got the suppressor on already, so we'll skip over that one. There's also an option for legendary effects. Skip over that as well. And here's where we can utilize the stock. We can extend it out or collapse it in, remove it entirely, or throw on some more fixed stocks, which will help us increase the recoil control. And this one here actually increases your reload speed because got all the magazines uh, mounted on the stock there, which I think is kind of cute. And we'll go for something like uh, full stock there for better recoil. Although this one says superior recoil and better aim with scopes. Interesting. Also saying integrally suppressed despite the suppressor being external, but what have you. And here's something we haven't seen before. You get a little bit of an external accessory, which you'll mount on this little thing here. You can have a strap there to increase your recoil control, which I think is kind of neat. A strength charm will improve your bash damage, which synergizes well with the heavier grip on this thing. You've got a perception thing, which will increase your range by three points. Probably not all that useful. Endurance will give you a little bit of extra damage resist. Five is literally nothing, so not that great. Improved intimidation chance doesn't actually tell you how much you get out of that, but if it's like plus 10%, then I suppose that's pretty good. Intelligence will improve critical rate. That just means that when you're firing and getting hits in VATS, you'll push up your crit bar faster. Agility is improved reload speed, which I'm not sure how fast that is, but I feel like that would be a pretty strong thing to put on this. And Luck Charm will increase your critical damage. So it looks like some of these are pretty good. These uh, last three, I think, are great. The rest of them, eh. Like, if I could increase the range by maybe like 10 to 20%, maybe 20% is too much. That would be a really powerful thing, especially on such a short-range weapon already. But there you go. Cute little charms on the front. Also with keys on them. Not sure what the keys unlock, but they're there. 
Okay, so let's have a quick chat about how to get this thing. So normally this mod is supposed to be injected into the leveled list at level 5, but I've checked Cleo's and Arturo's a few times, and if it's not showing up there, then it's not showing up in-game. But fortunately, there are uniques, and the first one we'll find right here in Hubris Comics. It's sort of in the middle of Boston. You've got Diamond City there. Good neighbors, not far away either. And uh, as you climb the Tower of Power, there's going to be... Plenty of little babby ghouls for you to slay. So, you know, walk through all these guys, then nothing. We're, we're too sneaky for these bastards anyway. And uh, keep climbing. If you find stairs that bring you up, just go because that's where you need to be. I have not memorized these spawns as perfectly as you might think, but, you know, they'll make themselves known if they feel like it. Yep, I'm in danger now, but all you need to do is find this room, usually locked. And uh, you pick up Bingo. the Daywalker, which, you know, a little bit of a reference to zombies works. It's got the Vampire's Legendary Effect and a cool, unique barrel. 50% um, chance to heal 10, 10 hit points on a hit. Pretty damn good. So if I need to tank something, which, you know, I'm not doing as much damage as I ought to. And, well, this might be a particularly potent weapon just for staying power. Anyways, once you're done here, just um, go out. Any ghouls that... Uh, aggroed by you can follow you so on your way out just be careful that you don't have ghouls spawning right behind you the next location is here in Molden the big med tech building this place can only be uh, accessed properly when you've got McCree to a certain level he'll have the keys to actually open this place but it's right here on the map it's pretty uh, far out you've got Tappington Boathouse there um, Revere Beach Station, uh, the Kingsport Lighthouse is there, Salem, so it's around this neck of the woods. Anyways, go inside. Once you're inside MedTech Research, your objective is simple. Go up here, go high, and there's a little, uh, office section up here, which, where you'll find your Mac 11. It's called No Mercy, but there's a way of doing this normally without either a jetpack or a grappling hook, and it requires a lot of nonsense, so bring McCready along if you want to pass. This is the point of no passing unless you've got McCready, but there's this section here, which, you know, you could go up here in order to go here, but I believe this is like a, supposed to be like some sort of Skyrim door, but if you can get here, then there's this room full of terminals with the red floor. Just keep heading up. And then go around here again and keep heading up. You'll find this area here with a non-functional elevator. Keep going through. And here is the office once again. Do you get all that? Basically, it's the end of this cell. And there's also an M60 here. Hope this helps. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Extra damage against ghouls. No mercy. A left for dead reference, I think. Yes. Okay, so now I'm at MedTech with a character who I definitely know hasn't been in here before. And it looks like you can still utilize the, uh, oh, hey, there's ghouls in here. You can still utilize the, uh, ways of, uh, the grappling hook slash jetpack to get up here. But we'll see if we can use the ways of going around the back. This is not the way. The way is through here, yes. And I was thinking it'd be a Skyrim door, but apparently it isn't. Because I can go straight up to where I need to go. Just look out for the ghouls, by the way. Wait, out of, out of the way, out of the way. Again, just circle around here, go up to this, find that dodgy elevator, and walk right through. Okay, so that's a pretty easy way to get this thing. Oh, There's yeah. no mercy. Lastly, you want to come to Cambridge, the CIT ruins. Even if you've nuked the Institute, they still exist, which is great. They will be living in a perpetual red storm, which is uh, no problem for Iris, though. See, she's a child of Adam, and she's got Adam's gift of being immune to radiation. Um, unfortunately, not immune to bullets, which might be a problem as we're taking out these raiders, but you'll find that these uh, doors are wide open. Let's just shoot at any raiders you see and find this door right here. This is where you need to go. And once you get inside, this cell's absolutely tiny. So clear out any foes that you see. And then you want to hit this elevator and go higher. And once you get up the top, there's some raiders here. That one just hit you with a hammer. That's fine. And you'll find Anarchist yes. Annihilator with a rapid thing. It says, fuck you on the side. Well, that's not very nice. Uh, that's a 
really, really potent legendary effect for this thing. So that's cool. It's also got a muzzle boost on it as well. Ooh, that's even better. Okay. Here's what I've done. I've added a holographic sight to the Anarchus Annihilator. I've also noticed this has got an extra large magazine, which can't be attached under normal circumstances. So that's good for ammo capacity. I've also made some changes to No Mercy. I've given a glow sight and a 45 receiver. The muzzle here appears to be unique because there's no muzzle slot actually able to have anything attached to it on this one. Obviously, this one's got the unique barrel. I've given this one a laser sight, so we won't be using those sights at all. And again, no muzzle attachment here. I've also thrown on the agility tarm charm for a faster reload. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's get started. All right, we're finally here at the Immersive Gunners Plaza. Here is our Mac 11 in first person. You've already seen it. So we'll have a quick look at this thing in third person. You notice you hold it like a 10 millimeter pistol would normally be held. Uh, but in first person, you'll see that we're holding it with just one hand, even with the stock, which I think is kind of odd. There's the real animations. They're made by War Daddy, of course. So we've probably seen those on different guns, but they work with this thing and how it's made so that's cool let's go over to the other ones oh there's no drawing animations it just sort of teleports within your hands that's interesting anyways this one is that vampires one using that laser sight which is good for having a very clear sight picture of where we're actually aiming i quite like that a lot next this one here is the no mercy the ghoul slaying one with the glow sights and lastly we've got the anarchy thing Look at that, look at that recoil. I'm going straight over to the right with that. That'd be hard to control. It's pretty much all horizontal recoil. That's crazy. Anyways, uh, let's begin and we'll go, we'll start with this one. We've got a decent amount of range on this thing. We might be able to utilize it effectively in slow motion bats if we want. 95 damage. We'd have to micro burst this like it's an AS well from Battlefield 3. I think it'll work out pretty well for us though. See, I've got a plan. Gonna plink at him with 38 rounds from back here. That, okay, that didn't work super well. As they come closer, we're going to get the thing's full amount of damage. And if we add criticals in the mix... Was that a 10 round burst in VATS? That's interesting. The Mysterious Stranger showed up for absolutely no reason. I think I cancelled mid-burst and the Mysterious Stranger thought, Yeah, I'll take that kill. Seems pretty unsuppressed firing this thing um, in slow motion, but what have you. Ooh, that's really good. Okay, let's go for a little bit of gun through here because we've got crits to burn. Why not? That's very strong. Very strong. Okay, I wasn't expecting a 10 round burst, but it makes sense being such a high rate of fire weapon. But that is going to throw things in our favor pretty heavily here. And here I thought we'd be struggling. Although I will say that the 4.4 uh, multiplier that we're uh, shooting everything with might be flattering this thing a little bit. Now we're in danger. We get a more realistic interpretation of what that damage is. Even still, this thing's rate of fire is just going to crush everything at close range anyway. So maybe it's a weapon that can punch above its weight and having it access to it fairly early on is going to allow you to well utilize it pretty well from a low level anyways i should probably switch over to something else now obviously the ace operator perk doing a lot of heavy lifting here let's go over to our vampires one not that we need the healing but for a staying fight then it's helpful and we're at full health again so we might be able to have a really good tank-on-tank -tank slugging match with this thing. Oh, look at that little baby gunner. Oh my god. It's like the mouse is being wrenched to the side as I'm firing this. I don't think I've ever encountered a recoil pattern. Anything like that before. Interesting. Anyways. So it's meant to be like a 50% chance of um, giving myself 10 HP heal per shot, which means... Like, with the amount of fire this thing gets, that's so much. Look at my health slowly regenerating. I don't have enough to worry about these guys, you know, sitting there tanking most of my damage like this, simply because, well, I keep myself alive just from using this thing. Okay, let's go over something different. We'll use this one for a little bit. The little glow sight, no mercy thing. 
Actually, I think there's ghouls that spawn around here. Yeah, there's Tactical. Um, he hasn't been deployed today, so we'll betray him. Where is he? Cop that. There's a few ghouls that spawn around here-ish. I've used them before as a distraction, but... I mean, that they're all small fish compared to gunners anyway, so that was just a pretty meaningless tangent, to be honest. But anyways, ghoul slayers. Now, the gunners are smart. They don't recruit ghouls. You never see any ghouls working for the gunners, both in mods and in normal. That's a lot of shots we can get with bats in this thing. Okay. Interesting. Now, I wonder if that is reflected in our ability to use the slow motion bats. Barely handily. Okay. So there's plenty of uh, good synergies you can have with this thing, both using that. So if you've got one that'll increase your critical damage or you happen to roll a lucky one from somewhere, I think you're going to be laughing. I suppose it's not a whole lot different to using bats and just watching the game target for me when using uh, slow motion bats in, in this case. But now the gunners are all sort of spread out and staggered a little bit. There you are, coward. Eat this. Use your face to generate some crits back. Three round bursts, or th no, three bursts, and then they're dead. That's remarkably effective for a weapon that's going to be offered to you at level five. It, uh, is it too much? Uh, maybe? I had a critical here. Hitting for over 100 damage per those... Uh, shots means I'm getting a thousand damage over the burst it's crazy it's nuts weirdly enough it looks like looks like I'm getting a three round burst when I utilize this thing uh, normally and the slow motion bat so I don't know if that's a bug I may have caused it but it's definitely useful anyways let's go over to our unsuppressed version full anarchy spec thing Shorter barrel muzzle booster. Obviously, the damage isn't going to be flash, but, you know, using this thing with a shorter Sweet. barrel, this should be slightly better. Maybe not as good. You could probably argue that a rapid receiver on this thing is probably pushing it, because at this moment, that I'm just going through so much ammo that, well, I think this guy's going to outheal me between reloads, so there's that. Probably went a little bit too high on the rate of fire side on this thing. At least the stagger chance is nice on this thing, I suppose. But at this point, they're just tanking everything that I'm shooting at them. So, probably didn't do the right attachments there, but for maximum rate of fire, you can definitely do it. Whether you should, no. Anyways, let's uh, generate more criticals. I've got no idea how much I actually have at the moment. And have we got gunners here? Yep, we do. I think the gun, the gunners here have finally triggered the combat music, but too late. Activated bats when I was already in slow motion. Now that's weird. Well, that did better than I thought. Really crush it there, especially with bats criticals. We might actually, um, might actually sought to utilize those a lot coming in these next boss fights because you know that da that damage alone probably won't help me too much so we'll use that as much as we can just the bats the synergies for what they are because they're useful also works with classic holstered weapons big iron on your hip and that although i'm pretty sure the ranger had a big revolver and not a mac 10 to mow texas red down i oh. meant to say mac 11 look i was one off the number of what it actually is i'm not that bad Anyways, uh, there's the, the swan. Let's uh, see how, what we can do from back here. Oh, he's friendly for now. We still get a hell of a lot of shots with this thing, even if we aren't um, critting every shot or using a hyper-optimized version of this gun for that purpose. There's the reload. Good thing we're not playing as a blonde because they'd forget to reload most of the time. Anyways, as you're standing there and uh, being aggroed by that feral ghoul, just go ahead and take him on. And keep in mind that we're not even remotely in range of this thing yet. So as he gets more into range, then we can uh, utilize these crits a little bit better. Okay. Maybe we find something a little bit more optimal, like this one. 
We could probably stand directly under him and just shoot him for days in vats. Look at that. I've actually maxed out the amount of vats hits I can put out before I even deplete the AP bar. That's how hyper efficient this thing is. So again, for really low level players that haven't developed their agility stat, you can probably find a lot of use of this thing in vats. So if you're not big on actually aiming in this game, and that's okay, that's fine, that's a valid way to play. You can turn this into a full, a proper turn-based uh, RNG a gameplay if you use VATS. Many a true nerd has proven you can do exactly that and it'll be really well. So if you are wanting to play Fallout like that, then it's a perfect weapon for that thing because you can just flog VATS from Monday to Sunday using this thing. As I'm using all of these criticals on his face. Slowly chipping away at his health. Too bad there wasn't like a Mutant Slayer version for me to pick up. Would have been perfect to use in this situation. Alright. Less impressive damage when we aren't shooting him in the face. 40 is okay. Are you going to move there? He's not really making a move at all. Maybe I'll use the rest of this VATS run just to generate criticals on his mug. We've got the Mysterious Stranger coming in, so we should be pretty safe. There's another crit. Hoping for many, many, many things. Maybe you should have put the faster crit generation on this thing because, well, it's that good. There we go. There's our full crit bar ready to go. I'll use one. Why not? helpful bit of damage, but I think the time has come to take it to him. Let's go. Wait. Wait for it. And there we go. Serious Stranger has appeared again. He's going to take my kill. Do it. There he goes. We've only come up with the assist there, but we did most of the work, so we could attribute that kill to us. It's like a Battlefield 4 assist counters kill 99%. Anyways, that was it for Swan. Let's um, do something a little bit more stealthy. Perhaps using this thing crit spam during the night will be a good choice. We've got to be pretty quick here because this is where the Ghoul Slayers thing comes in real handy. And we're going to be able to pull crits out of our ass doing this, so I don't particularly care if we don't hit those creatures, but what we want to do is hit him as much as possible. He's missed that blood bug. I mean, that bloat fly. You know what? I'm going to use the criticals anyway because screw these turds. And now, we can just spam criticals. Literally pull them out of our ass because, well, that's fine. We're good. Um, it's our fourth target in the gun foo streak. And it's a good thing that I actually use those criticals on those bugs because... Doing that kept him from being aggroed. We've got sneak criticals slash vats criticals that entire run. So that's the kind of crazy shit you can do with this thing. Not to mention this thing's also ghoul slayers as well. So we get an extra 50% damage through all of that. So probably a hyper specialized weapon for that purpose. But, you know, we made it work. And you could really push this thing to proper end game potential. Provided you've got the uh, right conditions for it so that was pretty cool all right so for the last fight i've swapped the rapid legendary effect on this anarchy pistol with furious and what i'm going to do is take on these bears and try to rapidly stack furious damage until i get the kills in which might be a little bit difficult but we'll see how we go if i miss the target even once i'm going to miss out on all of that glorious extra furious damage but if i keep shooting the same one over and over with the stagger cancels we can do 620 damage per bullet which is fairly good anyways i think i've activated nerd rage for the first time during this video which has in turn activated destroyer of acadia so i can just go over and shred all of these bears in a glorious slow motion final stand hopefully we get a stagger on that bear that's good keep them coming that screen shake that happens when a bear gets um staggered is hilarious to me i don't know why it happens you know what let's uh, break up this action and use this one for healing purposes let that health coming back watch the health bar watching good 
kind of useless now that he's kind of stuck there in no man's land being gunned down like that. But yeah, I mean, I don't really need to demonstrate or t say anything about how rapid fire weapons quickly utilize the furious effect to get crazy amounts of damage. But you saw what happened there, and I hope you were entertained by what you saw. It was certainly fun to mess around with it like that. So that there was the Mac 11, not to be confused with the Mac 10, of course. And uh, it's good. The DAC 11, a solid weapon. A weapon that, you know, has beaten my expectations. I didn't think it'd be quite as good as what we've seen today, but it's done well to punch above its weight. Would that make it overpowered? Probably a little bit um, deserving more of pushing up to maybe like a level 15 type setup for this thing first appearing. Well, you could argue that the higher tier attachments requiring uh, stronger levels or higher levels to actually equip or unlock the said perks to get these attachments. That might be a balancing factor there, but I wasn't really paying attention to the perk requirements. Maybe you could make that decision yourself if you think about it, if you want to go back to it. Also, I made a, I downloaded a mod called um, Clear Horizons, and it used to have this these weird, wacky cloud covers over the horizon on the Commonwealth, and it's removed that, which leaves very straight-edged sort of hills in the background, which sort of pop in if you're not looking. Just look over here for a moment. So I slide the camera around. Not quite as pretty as the landscape we see in real life. There's a little bit of a blur as well, and maybe if that blur wasn't there. I don't know, I think I quite like it. Reminds me of the uh, roads going up to Canberra. There's lots of mountains. I listened to New Vegas music doing that, but that was that was weird. I, I played a lot of New Vegas. I think it was like this time last year before um, heading back to work. And you know what? It might be time for a annual new vegas playthrough i do with the ratchet and clank games every year but i'm getting off track and i'm talking shit so i'm gonna stop the video here if you like to see this weapon in your game check out the link in the description it'll be down there it's a worthwhile mod check it out pretty much anything from dak and his mates at this point is just worth downloading so yeah check it out go download it iris is a follower download her she's fun